The Morning Majority with Mary Catherine Ham, Brian Wilson, and Brian Neiman on 630. WMAL. 807 on a Thursday morning. Ken Cuccinelli's in the house as well. The Virginia Attorney General gets some more of your phone calls with him coming up at one 888 Sort of shocking yesterday to see the Dow plummet some 280 points. A lot of people watch the Dow as sort of a barometer of where the economy is. Whether that's right or wrong, it, it does have an impact on consumer confidence. Other sort of shaky data out there indicate that housing may be headed for a double dip and uh, jobs aren't growing as fast as perhaps the, the Obama administration would would like them to. If there was ever a day when we needed my good friend Stuart Varney to come on the show and help us understand what's going on with the economy, what this would be it. Hello, <laughs> Stu. How are you? Brian Wilson, as I live and breathe, it's good to talk to you again. Well, it's, you? it's good to have you on the program today. Look, make some sense out of, of what sorts, sort of looks nonsensical to a lot of people. What's going on with the economy, and is it as dire as some have said? Yes, it is as dire as some have Ooh. said. We've had lousy and I repeat that word, it may be harsh, lousy economic news in the past week. Terrible news on housing. Housing prices are down to the level that they were in 2002, down 30%. That's the store of value for most people in America. Lousy news on jobs, manufacturing slowing down, consumer spending slowing down, gas still at 380, 390 in most parts of the country. That is lousy news, and to top it all off, we're only growing at 1.8% for this economy. It looks like the economy hit a brick wall in the early part of this year, and we're not moving. Now, that's just terrible news on the economy. And, Stu, let me follow up with, a, with another question. Is uh, I heard some really sharp analysis yesterday. It said that part of the problem is if we are headed to another slowdown and softening of the economy, there aren't many tools left for the federal government to use to try to juice the economy back to health. Well, that's a very good point. Uh, we spent a trillion dollars on mm -hmm. stimulus mm -hmm. and extra government spending. We spent a couple of hundred billion trying to bail out the housing industry. Neither policy, neither big spending has actually worked to produce the results that we expected. So what do you do now? More of the same? I don't think there's any political stomach for another big stimulus program. And the housing bailout has just about run its course. People have no more time for that because it hasn't worked. So you're right. What are the policy options for the administration? Can they do a U-turn and go to private enterprise, stimulate private spending, stimulate a capitalist economy and retreat from government? I don't think this administration can do that. They don't know how to do it. No, no. It's not in their lexicon. It's not in their political playbook. Um, so what they're going to do, frankly, I don't know. But everybody does want to know, because the future of this economy at this moment hangs in the balance. We are spiraling down. It's very serious. You're frightening me. You know that. You're scaring me to death. Stuart was supposed to come on and cheer me up a little bit. I was bit. really hoping that oh, you'd well. say, oh, no, oh, stay well. the course, everything's going to be fine. Well, but no, here's <laughs> gloom and doom Varney. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait a minute here. I'm the optimistic <laughs> Englishman in this yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I am optimistic. I, I just think that the immediate future is, is frankly, it is grim. Um, By sorry. which you mean one to three years? I think, look, I think we're increasingly looking like Japan after its bubble burst right. in 8990. Uh. Uh, a long period of very low growth, high unemployment, and a low morale. Morale in this country, in America right now, is, is, is way down there. Can I ask you about that, Stuart? This is Ken Cuccinelli. Uh, you mentioned the housing, the loss of housing value, and, and one thing I look at for that is what that does to consumer confidence, and you're talking about morale and consumer confidence being the, the sort of m motivation for two-thirds or 70 percent of the potential for recovery, in my view, uh, yep. suggests a big problem at the individual level, at the consumer level. Is that a fair way to look at this? Mr. Attorney General, you are quite right. The principal store of wealth for most Americans is the home in which they live. 66% of us own the home in which we live. Most of that 66%, I'm not quite sure of the proportion, but I, I'd say most of them, have lost an enormous amount of their equity stake. We feel poorer. We cannot borrow against that equity stake. So we're in a hole here. Uh, I, this, this is where I, I think we have to bite the bullet. I think the housing market has to flat out crash. 
It just has to, it has to clear, as they say in the business. Mm -hmm. That would bring vultures in from the outside, private capital, snapping up bargains, and away we go. We find a bottom, a move from there. I think that has to happen. It will be extremely painful but it's got to happen. Let me ask you one other thing for the next month. Quantitative easing, too, is going to end this month. What's that going to do, do you think, to the course of the economy? Nothing, because it's not going to end. Because it didn't do anything. Well, well, I don't think Ben Bernanke... Oh, really? Gonna, I don't think he's going to turn off the printing presses. I don't think he's going to allow interest rates to rise. I think he's going to continue with some form of keeping interest rates low, printing money, Pumping but the doesn't money that happening. build no, in growing inflationary pressure that's got to blow at some point? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. All the money that he's printed over the past couple of years has gone into the stock market, gold, oil, food, basic food commodities. It has not been pumped out. See, Brian, he pumped. was being cheerful before. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but, no, so you're thinking that he's just going to continue with QE2, or is it going to stop for a while that he's going to go to QE3? Or it, Well... If you, all these expressions are, I think, a little complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he's going to keep interest rates low by using the money in the Federal Reserve's account, which is $2.7 trillion. Right. You can say he's printing that, but he's going to pump it out, and he's going to keep interest rates low. It's a form of QE3. Right. Bottom line, rates stay low, the money gets pumped out. All right. Are we seeing it in the bond market yet? I no. mean... No, what we're seeing in the bond market, interestingly, is a lot of hot money coming yeah, from Europe, right. which is in the dumps, right. and Greece is bankrupt. That's hot money that comes over there, comes into the dollar, and the easiest way to buy into the dollar is to buy America's treasury debt. Hmm. So the price goes up and the yield goes down. Yesterday, the yield on the 10-year treasury dropped below 3%, hmm. to historically low levels. All right, let me be someone who can be, tr I try to be <laughs> optimistic here. The the, the companies, uh, private sector companies, the big boys, are in much, much better shape. Their balance sheets are much leaner. You know, th th whatever people believe, believe that they're a trillion dollars on the sidelines just waiting to be used. Um, people are saving, as, as Ken mentioned. I mean, uh, consumers, you know, are, are no longer have uh, really bad credit or, or, or you know, they have a negative savings number like we had at one point. Um, so is there the possibility, because the balance sheets are better for the big companies, the banks are in much better shape, certainly, than they were in 2008, that we're not going to see a collapse like we no. thought we were going to have in 2008. Oh, no, no, no. I, let's not go overboard on this. This is not some kind of financial crisis. Well, I heard, I mean, I heard depression mentioned several times yesterday yeah, I mean, on, on some networks. If you read Drudge yesterday, you, you wanted to go out and slit your wrists. Well, I think that's a mistake, and I think that's hyperbole, and I don't think that is on the cards at all. Right. Well, thank you. If we, <laughs> you feel better, Brian? <laughs> I do. Put that knife away, Brian. Put I'm knife. trying to cheer you up here, lad. You know. <laughs> um, look, um, the, the, the uh, corporate America is in very good shape. Profitability is very strong, especially for the big-name Fortune 500 companies. Unfortunately, the money is being made overseas and is being kept overseas. They don't want to repatriate it to a 35% tax rate here. That could be fixed. The consumer is in a better balance sheet situation, and I think that forms a good basis for a nice expansion of consumer spending in the future. But they lack confidence. With $4 gas, you're not confident that things are going to improve in the future. Right. It's a crisis of confidence, pure, not, not pure and simple, but a bottom line crisis of confidence. Yeah, it's amazing. Even the unions want to co cooperate to get that corporate money repatriated back here to the U.S., That's, which is incredible. I mean, they're willing to drop the tax hurdle for it. Um, I've never seen that before. I don't ever remember that before. That tells you almost how desperate even the left is. Right. Wouldn't it be nice to see real political leadership like Ronald Reagan's Morning in America? Sunny side up. Here we go, boys. Let's get on with them. Let's get on with business. Wouldn't it be nice to mm, see that? It would be nice. It'd be nice to see a strong economy, too. Yes. <laughs> All right, Stuart. Always good to talk to you, no matter what the topic is. Are we you appreciate sure? it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're all right. <laughs>